someone wanted a session as close to what you experienced as possible, how would you design it? Would it be indoors, outdoors? I'd, des- I'd be designing it outdoors. Um, use it using intervals um, of you know higher higher intensity body weight exercises. Normally, normally kind of um, a lot of st- a lot of stuff would would end up putting you down on the ground. So you'd be literally dragging your body weight with your arms. Um, it's a it's an excellent way to it's an excellent way to um, develop upper body strength by right? literally dragging your body along on your hands. Yeah. Um, there'll be there'll be a lot. Of, I mean, most of the stuff that would get you pretty dirty, pretty tired, and and have you have you crawling on the floor, jumping, climbing. Um, you know, all of that sort of stuff, kind of numerous push-ups and sprints and swims and hill sprints, all that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're out in Thailand at the moment. You put us through uh, what you nicknamed the Magic Hundred. Can you just tell us what that involved exactly? Yeah, the Magic Hundred was a uh, was a really really simple workout. I thought um, no, <laughs> the, Ma- the Magic Hundred was a, there was this idea that we laid out um, a 100 meter 100 meter track, so to speak, down the beach, um, and we would carry out different activities for 100 meters. Now, when most people think of carrying out activities for 100 meters, you know, they might think of uh, sprinting 100 meters or I don't know, you know, bunny hopping and jumping or, or those types of things. We did, as you saw, we did a we did a hell of a lot more. So yep. you know, there was there was sprint down the beach for 100 meters, swim back for 100 meters, um, you know, crawl along, crawl along through the sand just using your arms, you know, head o- head over heels rolls. Um, ultimately, I think by the end of it, we did a we did a kilometer of various of various work, but it was the uh, I think the toughest kilometre most of the guys have <laughs> travelled in their life. Especially on soft sun. Yeah. Right, nutrition. Um, obviously, we hear a lot about five, six meals a day, supplements all over the place. Obviously, soldiers don't have access to this. How did you keep up your energy levels high enough to get through all of this, this training? Um, Do you think it's important to be eating regularly? Or? In, uh, certainly, in, in marine training, you eat when you can. I mean, when you're, when you're a soldier, that's the general rule is whenever food, food presents itself, you eat it. <laughs> You know, so it's, it's not much stru- much more structured than that is, mm. but you generally tend to um, the the Royal Marines kind of pioneered a pioneered a system in, in their galleys. A galley is another word for a cookhouse on a on a ship. Um, so they they pioneered, pioneered a, a traffic light system. So you'd have uh, red, amber, and green food. So the the guys that were a bit overweight when they started training would be encouraged to stick away from the red foods, mm. and they could only eat ambers and greens. So it would okay. encourage them to lose. To lose fat quicker. If you were already on the thin side, you could eat. You could eat across the, the entire the entire spectrum of foods. Um, what you will find is a lot of the guys. There's still a lot of mentality in the Marines, um, much very similar to long distance runners. In that this this mental concept of, of carving up is still quite prevalent. Mm. You know the idea that before you before you go and do something something that's endurance based, you've got to you've got to really heavily carb up. Um, and obviously, you're always encouraged to eat a fair bit of fat when you can as well before mm. those those types of events. So uh, that's what that's what most nutrition generally t- tends to come down to. I mean, there's the the Royal Marines, the Royal Marines chefs. You know, they're they're not your, your stereotypical kind of old old school um, slop. You know, that, that most people think of when they think of military food. They're they're very very highly qualified, and they they put they put together some pretty good meals for the guys. But we our, our breakfast most days is, is pretty much like a traditional English breakfast. It's yeah. it's bacon eggs and pretty much everything you can fit in your face in, in 15 minutes. <laughs> but, I mean, would you suggest that for someone who's uh, maybe a civilian, as you guys would call it, in terms of eating? Cause obviously, you were training pretty much all day, every day. So. Yeah. Um, for, for your average civilian, no, that's going to be that's going to be completely the wrong approach. It, mm. Obviously, most most people have got to watch what they eat a fair bit more than that. They're just simply not, not burning off anywhere near as much calories as a raw marine would, would burn away. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, I have mixed feelings on... I have mixed feelings on things like meal spacing and how people put, mm. to, put together their meal plans. Uh, from the one perspective, yeah, it seems like it seems like a good management technique to eat four to six meals a day. You know, every everyone's saying it. Everyone's saying that we should should eat kind of four to six meals a day to keep our energy yeah. levels balanced. Um, on the on the other side, you know, from personal experience and from the experience of a lot of my clients, um, I've I've actually found that eating four to six meals a day for a lot of people, unless you're introducing a new habit, like you're you're kind of switching them over from very bad foods to to good foods. Um, but once they've established that, it doesn't seem to work work quite so well for most of my clients. And um, I find that they they generally tend to eat kind of one or two slightly bigger meals per day and feel better on that. And my own personal favourite eating eating style would be pretty much to go with go without eating most of the day, eat most of my food at the end of the day. Um, kind of like the warrior diet. Approach. Yeah, m- much more like the warrior diet because. You know, if you without getting an overly technical on it, but you know there are two two main phases to to how the human body runs. So you've got the the sympathetic nervous system, which is most of us call the fight or flight side of stuff, um, and then you've got your 
parasympathetic side, which is the rest and digest. And rest and digest is when you when you know all the systems slow down, and that's all about maintenance and kind of repairing what's going on inside your body. It all sounds really good. But if you put food into your body kind of four to six times a day every day, you're going to through four to six rest and digest phases. Um, I would I would kind of argue quite strongly that four to six rest and digest phases on your internal organs, you know, every day is probably not the best way for you to burn fat if that's if that's your primary goal. Okay. All right, you pretty much answered all my questions. So for anyone out there who wants to know a bit more about marine training, how to do it properly, can you suggest any good places to start on the internet or books or anything like that? Well, I mean, if you go to, if you go to um, the, U- um, the UK military um, sites, which is, I believe, it's mod.gov.uk, um, and within that site you'll, you'll see every, every facet of the British Armed Forces, and there's a, there's a whole bunch of buttons in there for you to, uh, for you to look at. Um, they do have a whole section a section on Royal Marine selection and kind of what the, the test that they have to pass and how they earn the Green Beret and everything else. So yeah, it's, it's pretty thorough. Right, excellent. Thanks. Thanks. No thanks. Thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs>